Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Today we're going to work on finishing landscapes and uh, we're going to begin by defining the focal points. And before we begin, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my free Insiders Club. Insiders Club members get first access to these weekly live streams and you also get access to other live events and you get discounts on courses and programs along with access to free lessons and other free content available only to subscribers. So all you have to do is go to www.drawwithchris.com and there you can enter your email and you'll be good to go. So I have a little landscape sketch here done in my computer here. The first question I want to ask is, is it even working? So I need to step back, take a look at the composition, starting with the value composition. Okay, here on the left side of the screen, you can see the value thumbnail. So look at it small and you can see uh, there's a lot of things working, that nice dark shadow shapes working, the angles are working. Overall, the value composition structure is working. So yeah, we have a nice dark middle light. We have a lot of room to play with it actually. This is working quite nicely now I think about it. It just needs gradients. Okay, so let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, what's my story about? My story is about contrast. Contrast, and I'm trying to think of a metaphor. Standing out. That's my metaphor. Fighting for what you believe in. I don't know. I just, I just made that up. I'm just uh, thinking out loud here, but I need some story elements that I can start to arrange the picture. So fighting the angles, the sharpness, contrast with the curves, I think that's perfect. It's like this sharp, angular rock trying to burst out of this curvy world. Red rock burst out of this curvy green world. There you go. That's, that's my story. So that means I'm going to need some focal points. There's a bit of cloud here. If you look at the reference, there's a bit of white cloud here. And I could put a cloud anywhere, obviously. Right here would be perfect. And we have a nice, um, you see the pretty angles here of this thing. So we have a triangular thing, a curvy thing, semicircular thing. So shape-wise, it's looking really nice. And to be fair, part of the reason why I chose this reference is because it had a, you know, I'm looking at reference or images or landscape scenes through the lens of experience design. And that part is not easy. I don't want to gloss over that like it's easy. So in, in this case, we don't have to do work on the shape composition. That's working quite nicely. So with that said, let's do a focal point map. Okay, on the left side of the screen here, we're going to do a little focal point map. I know it's a little small, but it's important to do this in the thumbnail stage when it's small. We need to look at this whole picture. So clearly we have a big push this way, right? That's clear. That's a big dominant push. There's arrows going from the lower left to upper right. So that means you have to give the viewer something here or turn down the pointing because you're basically pointing to the viewer. Hey, I need something here. So that could be a nice focal point there. You can already tell this circular thing is a nice counterbalance. So that could be two. And then there could be something here. I can actually put a person here or something. It's what Edgar Payne was, would do. Put a person here or a horse or something. A car. So let's do that. Actually, you see how it went ended this quickly? So let's do terms of priority read. Let's make this one. So this will be clearly one. This will be two. This will be three. Now, how do we get there? Let's talk about eye flow. So remember focal point one. So remember these arrows right here will naturally point us to one. How do we get from one to here? Well, this bit of contrast will be so sharp right here because this will be a dark little tree surrounded by light sky right here. So we can just really make you go there because of the shape and contrast. And the small shape surrounded by a large mass of sky is really eye-catching. So that's one, two. And then to get to the car in the bottom, we'll follow the path of the core shadow. You see that? Follow the path of the core shadow. Do, 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 do. That's one, two, three. And then let's quickly do uh, some color testing. 
some color ideas now that uh, we have our focal point in black and white tonal composition. Okay, let's look at the color composition. So I know where the focal points are and how I'm going to lead the eye to them. Let's see if color can play a part and value. So right away, I know that the sky needs a gradation. And like I mentioned earlier, we're going to put a hot spot right about here. You see how already that's looking like a more realistic sky. A nice little hot spot there. And then also a gradation of sky over here. That looks nice. So focal point one, looking good. You can even darken the mountain even more. Let's try that. What I mean by dark in the mountain is uh, the mountain in the background here. And it should help. It does, because it is a bit darker than what I have. There's texture there too, so that'll help. There you go. It does help. Brings a lot of attention to the focal point. A lot of attention. We could put some color over here at the second focal point, but let's think about the color in the middle. Right now, there's a lot of gray. So let's see if I can turn up the color in the middle just to see what would happen. I think it would look good. It does need some color. Oh, yeah. This will help to draw the eye to the lower right corner. Oh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a gradation of red and saturation that kind of culminates bottom right. This is going to be subtle. So you see how it, with all of the things, basically, as it gets closer to the bottom right it's going to get more saturated and more red so that'll draw the eye to the bottom right you see color comp you see the direction of the color gradation i know it's small i know it's small but the bottom right a little bit more colorful and then i could put a value gradation on the road oh there it is you see how the road now it's a bit darker and it will draw your eye to whatever i can put right here Whatever I put right here is going to become a focal point. So it's going to be exciting. This is exciting already. I'm kind of excited. In fact, let's do that now. Let's do the Edgar Payne. I'm going to put a cowboy here. Let's see. Let's just put a cowboy right there, whatever. Can I move him around? Let's make them black. Let's make them dark red. <laughs> Boom. Little tiny red thing. Man on a horse. That would be kind of fun to draw. It's a little too red, but kind of get the point. That's now a focal point. We have eye flow. We have some nice value gradations, or at least a plan for the gradations. There's going to be a sort of a vignette happening, the light in the middle. Vignetting in the foreground to emphasize this lower right area and then we can do more we could play more with color and things up here if we want to draw the eye here but i think just value wise i'm going to leave it alone so that the color pop is in the middle so we have a nice smooth gradation in the back draw your eye contrast with the angular sharpness and then this small object in a big field just draws your eye because of value and shape design contrast and then the beautiful color in the middle kind of keeps you in the picture and leads your eye to the focal point. And then that's the journey. That's pretty nice. So you see how it's um, lots of planning. But now, because I have a clear game plan, I can execute. So let's do that now. Okay, first thing I need to do is I'm going to block in some gradients. This blocking is still really rough. So I just kind of want to get an idea for where I'm at. You know, in a way, bring myself closer to this color comp that we have here. It's a bit more clarity there. Let's start with the sky. Sorry, I got to zoom out so I can see what I'm doing a bit more. It's a nice little morning curved gradient. I like that. How's the color here? I know it might be small in video. Sorry. I just need to do this just for my sanity. Let's also go left to right. Up the bottom. Oh, that looks nice. Let's see uh, if I can make any adjustments. No. Okay. 
just wanted to see if it was need more blue, more purple, more green. It's a little too green for my taste. Could be this guy here. Let's turn this guy back to not green. There you go. That's better. That way it kind of pushes it back a little bit more. So I have sky grad. And I can add the focal point with the brush. Let's do that quickly. I just want to see. I do have a cloud kind of brush, but it won't be necessary. It won't be the end product. You don't need cloud brushes to make clouds. It's a little too warm. Feels like morning time. So there you go. Just make it back towards blue. And let's just play with it a little bit here. The edge. There you go. Not, it's not perfect, but it gives us that nice little light burst that we need to, for it to be a strong focal point. Remember, the arrows are already pointing there. Let's go to the middle ground. It's a little flat. Just going to give it some color or some variation. It's very gray. It's certainly need color. We just need more variation and to go a little bit darker as well. Okay, that feels pretty good. It does need some texture. Let's see if I can put some texture on there now. I have a special brush. It, sh it might work. It should work. Let's go again with another brush. This gives you a little bit of texture. Okay, it's close enough. Definitely could use some more fine tuning. But close enough for what I need. Let's see where we at here. The rock needs gradation. Let's do that now. Use the gradient tool first. Let's give it a try. That looks nice, actually. That looks nice. Even on the, um, the grass surface, it looks nice. I erase a little bit of it on the grass, on the green stuff. It's looking nice, actually. I like that. I'm going to leave it like that. <laughs> this is a shadow mass. Right, let's see what we could do with shadow mass. Let's just add some red and let's see what that does. Oh, man, that just looks so nice right there. So nice. A little burst in the middle. Add some red down here. And then down here, remember, we're going to put a figure. So we may even want to do this. Actually, the figure will get... Oh, that looks nice right there. You see how it'll force you to look there because of that red. So that I may want to save that for the figure, which is probably what I'm going to do. That's an Edgar Payne classic. Basically, the figure is going to be like this dark brown mass. And then I'm going to put a red shirt or a red hat on him, something super bright red. And that is about it right there for a nice little block in. I can keep going and I probably will add more texture. But um, what really needs to happen is uh, moving towards a finish because the pieces are there. So that means we just got to do a lot of cleanup and things, which will be kind of boring. It's boring to watch because small changes happen. Every finish is like that. What I will do is I will bring this up a level and then we'll start to execute on the actual polish in the next video. All right, first thing I want to do is, uh, since we know that the sky will be a focal point, let me go ahead and add some bit of a darker and more blue color. Oh, that looks nice right there. So that looks pretty nice, actually. And then we'll take circular gradient right at the focal point. There you go. And then um, we'll take the shape and stretch it out, see what that does. Yeah. Oh, that looks nice. It's a bit too uh, hard, the edge. Oh, that looks nice right there. I think I liked it before. Sort of this small sun glow so that really draws your eye, which is kind of what we want. And let me just kind of rough up this edge if I can't. A little too, uh, you know, too uniform. That's pretty good. Too uniform. And then let's turn this down a little bit. Oh, that is nice, actually. Full strength is pretty good. I like that. Okay, so we got another sky. 
There's a bit of cloud that needs to be thrown in here. I'm just using a cloud brush to draw in some cloud. Because what I want to do is um, reinforce the focal point. That's going to be our first focal point. And then I also want to lead your eye to the second focal point, which is this uh, tree over here on the left. That's a very good job. But you get the idea here. <laughs> there you go. You see, uh, look in this area here. Look in this area here where the sunspot is. Before, after, before, after. You see how the clouds are starting to move you towards little tree guy over here. Let's turn this down a little bit. So too bright. Okay, perfect. All right, that looks good to me. Next, we'll go to the um, the tree. I'm going to try something that Rob Rupel taught me, or I learned from him. He's a brilliant painter and art director in LA, which is this sort of shape So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if this works. <laughs> I'm going to cut into this tree for a geometric and graphic brush. Basically, you want to suggest leaves. That's what I'm trying to do. Suggest leaves with a shape. I don't know if I'm succeeding, but um, it does have texture now. That's that's for sure. Put some back. Need a little bit of texture. I know you might barely be able to see these changes on camera. That's sort of the nature of what we're in. So over here on the left, you see how the tree has got a bit more texture now, a bit more life. Let's um, add a bit more color to it. See if that helps. Draw your eye a little bit. Oh, that's helping nicely. Let's add a bit more. Oh, that's helping nicely. I'm starting to feel realistic now even though it's just really suggested detail so far. Oh, that's nice. Still needs a little bit more contrast to draw your eye. Perhaps let's shade the tree. Oh, that's nice right there. That should be enough contrast. We're creating the illusion of branches now. Darker branches, you see that? Uh, that just came to life so nicely. A little bit of dark. It's subtle, but it's coming to life. Oh, shit, it's too dark. There you go. Now let's do the, uh, the area around it. See if we can draw some attention there. And just overall polish and clean it up. I'm going to bring a bit more red into this area. Let's just see what that looks like. Just to draw your eye a bit more to it. It's working pretty good. A 
that's really the main thing I have to do is refine. So this is where I think a lot of us get lost when people ask me, oh, what do I do next? Well, we have to uh, find what we have till we get to a level of finish that we want. What does that mean? It means that these small detail shapes now support our overall idea. So we took the time to define our overall idea, which was this little draft thumbnail that we just worked on. So you see, um, it looks kind of random, but I'm not copying. What I'm trying to do is design the shapes to do this. So this is what I'm doing. And it will take forever. <laughs> so we have focal point here, right? FP2. Okay. We have FP1 here. So now you see the clouds. They're drawing this way. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. So now we're clearly here. Now I'm going to give you something to look at, which is what I just did with the tree. Gave the tree a little bit more detail and color. But now i got to develop this area. You see how it looks flat? So I'll take it away before. It doesn't look finished. It's a block in, you know? Find the tree. Ooh. So now I'm just adding the details that I see here. But I'm going to be very disciplined. This is the important thing. I'm not just going to copy the details. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple things. One, I kind of want to draw your eye this way with my details. So I'm going to force you to look at that. This does a good job. It does an okay job. Now I'm going to do it with the surrounding details. And, and I'm also going to lead you back down. Use a different color. So what's in pink is step one. What's in blue is step two. I guess try to also lead you back to FP3. Remember, we're going to put a person here. So that's my plan. I'm going to lead your eye here and then lead you back down. So that so you see where I'm going to put details and the shape I'm going to draw. So you notice I drew these light shapes here. You see how they're kind of staggered so that they draw the arrow. That's what we're doing here. So that's basically uh, what needs to be done. And uh, that's what I'm doing now. Just drawing, basically. can go all day, you know, can add details all day. Find what we have all day. And with this particular subject, we have some margin for error. We don't have to be as precise as a portrait, for example. Kind of a nice break from a figure, my God. Right now, I'd be stressing out right now, normally. <laughs> yeah, oh, is the drawing working? Oh, oh. I'd be stressing out, <laughs> trying to make sure the drawings, features are lined up. Oh, my God, so stressful. But uh, with landscape, I don't have to worry about that too much. Make sure your shapes have a nice flow to them. It makes sense. That you have a unified idea, which is why the planning stage is so important.
I got to admit, this is probably not that exciting to watch. <laughs> I'm trying my best to uh, not go completely silent on you, but it's one of those things that's just the slow, methodical kind of burn. This is where you just turn on your music and just kind of zone out. Because really, just refine, 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 refine. You saw the, the plan that I did, which is important. I know um, it's important to see a process follow through, but man, it's uh, not fun to watch. Even me, I'm like, oh boy. I feel like turning on some music and zoning out here. So you see what I just did here? This, you see that little shape there, little shadow shape? I could have done anything with that shadow shape, but I chose to design it to point back at the tree. So that's really important. That's sort of the philosophy I have for finishing anything, is to just make sure it supports your idea. So that's why I always <laughs> encourage you to come to the table with an idea. Don't just randomly come up here, make marks and randomly copy a reference. Oh, I see a tree. I'm going to make a tree. No, you have to uh, be very deliberate here. See, there's another shape here. I can also make it more of an arrow. You see what I'm doing with this little shape on the lower left that I just put down? You see how it's kind of an arrow now? It's too straight. So lots of little arrows everywhere. That's all I'm doing. I feel like Bob Ross a little bit here. Okay, so I hope you can see the changes. I'll put the changes side by side so we can compare. Okay, let's look at the comparison. This one still has some of the details showing through, but that wasn't there before. Notice over here, you see how the sky just looks a bit richer and fuller, has this darker blue over here, the sky. And then um, you see what I drew with the uh, focal point one over here, focal point one over here. And then you see how it flows nicely more towards the tree. And obviously we just did the detailed work here. And then these shapes, it's not the first version, but shapes were more blocky, but you see how the shapes kind of gently lead your eye down and they also point. You see everything is pointing, 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 pointing. And also, I'm pointing you down, pointing, pointing, pointing. So that's the plan. You see everywhere I put these little marks, that's where I put some attention. So if you're asking, how do I finish? How do I know where to render? That's where you do it. You put your attention in detail and areas that support your picture. In this case, my picture is about movement. It's about eye flow. So when you get down here. So let's get down here, establish our third focal point. That'll be a good stopping point. 
All right. Let's see if we can find a nice cowboy on a horse. Edgar Payne's the man. Oh, perfect. Little guy. Oh, that's perfect right there. <laughs> I just want to see how he does it. So I'm going to, on my other monitor, you know, I, um, I've i seen Edgar Payne's in real life. They have this nice glow to them. Obviously, on the computer screen, can't really feel the glow, but these paints glisten and glow. And he uses these little tiles, you see? Whoop. Little tiles, little square marks. Okay, so I got Edgar Payne on my other monitor here. Edgar Payne, little man, <laughs> little horseman. Dark purple. Staring at this Edgar Payne makes me want to go outside. And... That look like a horse, kind of. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. And around the butt. Around the horse butt. There you go. <laughs> there you go, a little pointy ear looking thing. Oh, that doesn't look bad, I gotta admit. I gotta admit, I'm not much of a horse guy. Oh, okay, he's a little big, like I mentioned earlier. So big. <laughs> Teeny tiny. A little big. I need more than one, I think. Oh, he's so lonely. My buddy. Further away. Squishes, buddy. So he looks like he's more foreshortened. Guy looks like he's riding a cow, big headed cow. Oh no, shadow should be this way. Anyway, they're really tiny. I don't want to spend too much time on them, but there they are. <laughs> this is my little horse man. Uh, I think the size is okay. Let's color them now. Colors a bit off. Right now they're a really strong focal point, which is great. Just grabbing some colors from the environment. Reds, and then um, we can add some more contrasting elements. It basically takes a lighter, super gray version. Let's make the horse. Oh, see, that's nice. The horse is sort of this light gray now. The horse will have a light gray face. Oh, oh, that looks nice. I do say so myself. Its main character will have a bright red shirt. 
Oh, that's killer. It's too bright red. That's Edgar Payne all day. I'm liking that. That's Edgar Payne all day long. Just turn down the saturation a little bit. Beautiful. And then this other guy will have a white or a light stripe on him. And let's make his horse a bit lighter. Now I just got to clean up the area around it, just like what we did earlier. Got to clean up the area around it. Let's start with this thing here. The color of these trees need to be adjusted. And uh, what I'm doing is uh, I'm adjusting the shape now. And you see I'm still pointing. I'm still pointing to back up because we need to go back up to look over here. We can't stay here. Well, we can, but you know, the viewer will want to be moved around their picture. So do that for them. And you see how I'm drawing this bush back up. You see that little arrow is pointing back up right here. See how it's pointing back up. It's also pointing this way. So it's a twofold. You see that little shape I just designed right here? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So if you have a plan, the finish is easy peasy, sort of. Well, not easy, but. At least you have an idea of what to, what to do. Just being lost, being uh, dazed and confused, you know. And again, designing, designing, designing so that they point, 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 point. And I have a foreground object here that I need to address. This little foreground rock thingy. And the road is a little flat as well. We can make the shadow interact with the horse. That's kind of nice there. And then make the road look like it's going back in the space. Let's add a little bit of a gradient to the floor. That'll be a good stopping point here. Too much texture. Let's try this one.
it's the <laughs> subtle gradient and play with it until it looks absolutely perfect but that's sort of the idea And you see, it's just very subtle glow around them to lighten the road. And that's really it. You see, I just clean up, refine, make the bushes look like bushes, make the shadow shapes of the bushes look like bush shadows. See how this is all not cleaned up? If you look at the reference, that's really it. Just clean up, clean up, clean up, refine, clean up, refine, bring up details in areas that need eye flow. That will take forever. <laughs> so this is a good stopping point here. Thank you for watching this video here.